Metroid Dread is actually real. Can you believe it? And while it was shown off during Nintendo's E3 Direct as well as their Treehouse Live, we also had the chance to learn even more about the game thanks to a media preview event featuring a new gameplay demonstration by Nintendo Treehouse staff Bill Trennan and Nate Bildorf, which was followed by a Q&A session with the game's producer, Yoshio Sakamoto, to find out even more juicy details about the game's development including what exactly happened over its 15-year development period, what inspired the new ME enemies, and whether this is really the end of the road for 2D Metroid, plus tons more. So here's the 12 new things we learned about Metroid Dread, including some brand new gameplay along the way. And before you ask, no, they wouldn't tell us anything about Metroid Prime 4. Sorry! Okay, let's address the elephant-sized Metroid in the room. Is Metroid Dread the last 2D Metroid, as the trailer seemed to possibly imply? Well, thankfully Sakamoto cleared this up real quick, because according to him, rather than being an endpoint in the series, he said it actually represents the start of something new. He continued that he doesn't want the series to end. And in fact, they already have a new episode waiting in the wings. Though he unsurprisingly had no other details to share. But still, that's pretty exciting. Although development may have begun 15 years ago, Nintendo hasn't been working on Metroid Dread this entire time. Sakamoto said that they actually abandoned the concept early on because of the hardware limitations of the Nintendo DS at the time, which prevented the technological concepts from matching their vision, and thus they decided to put the game on indefinite hold. But it wasn't on hold for long, at least relatively speaking, as they tried to restart the project sometime later. But they then stopped again for the exact same reasons. By this point, you can almost say they were dreading it. As it turns out, part of the reason Nintendo first met with Mercury Steam, the game's developer, was to assess whether they could eventually realize the concept of Metroid Dread, which their experience with developing Samus Returns quickly bore out. Who would have guessed that the title, Samus Returns, was even more literal than we could have ever imagined? Speaking of Mercury Steam, Sakamoto noted that development of Metroid Dread has largely been very similar to Samus Returns, with Sakamoto in communication with the remote team on a daily basis, and that Nintendo and Mercury Steam effectively came together as a single mind to see the project through. He also mentioned that, although he has a title of producer, he's also been heavily involved in the creative side of things too. Metroid Dread has always been envisioned by Sakamoto to be the game that followed Metroid Fusion as the next proper 2D sequel. Specifically, to build and expand on the tension introduced by the frightening and intimidating SAX enemy, now in the form of the Emmys and mixed with the more typical Metroid style of gameplay, in order to create something new and exciting. Sakamoto is very clear that the Metroid Dread of today is entirely faithful to the original concept as envisioned 15 years ago, with Samus, a powerful warrior, being confronted by an overwhelmingly powerful enemy that chases after her. But, he continued that the Emmy gameplay turned out even better than he first imagined 15 years ago, and seeing it realized today made him feel really satisfied. Clearly, the Emmys have a super neat but unsettling design, and Sakamoto stated that the desire to create tension and the fear of being chased by something powerful is exactly what helped influence the Emmys' design, with him wanting to create something that was unsettling and communicated the unfeelingness that you'd expect from a robot that exists specifically to track Samus down. Despite how creepy and intimidating the Emmys can be, Sakamoto doesn't think of Metroid Dread as a horror game. Instead, he said it's about encountering fear, standing up against it, fighting it, and eventually overcoming it. On the topic of cutscenes, Sakamoto noted that we should expect to see one similar to those in Samus Returns, as they're useful for increasing character expressiveness, along with maintaining tension, and helping to tell the story, which Sakamoto stressed was very important this time. When asked if he was at all concerned about Samus' faster, more agile movement being at odds with the game's darker atmosphere and tension-based gameplay, Sakamoto responded that, no, he wasn't. Instead, he said that the faster and more agile movement is a total benefit to the entire game. Though on the topic of moving quickly, Sakamoto noted that there are otherwise no additional changes in the game to facilitate speed running, as compared to previous titles. Hey, Unscripted Andre here, and hopefully you enjoyed the 12 things that we learned from the Q&A with Mr. Sakamoto himself, which is super cool and informative. Now beyond that though, as I had already mentioned, we also got to see a bit more gameplay of the game, I think largely covering things we had already seen in the Treehouse, but I did go over a few more details a little bit more in depth, and gave us a better look at the game in general too. And I just have to say overall, I am so uh, excited by Metroid Dread. I am loving what seems to be the intense evasion of the new Emmy creatures, and how they move is so unsettling. Um, I love how they can spin around and follow after you by going through uh, small corridors and like 
basically ventilation ducts. It's all looking pretty unique by Metroid standards, and that is what's really exciting. The fact that you really have to think about how you're moving through these environments now, not just how you get from point A to point B, but how you avoid these enemies along the way and avoid being caught by them. Now, we did learn that if you are caught by one, you can do a counter to get to get away. Otherwise, it is a one-hit kill. They will just instantly take you out if you don't counter. However, with the enemies, the timing on it is even tighter than most others. Meaning, it's going to be a bit tough to get away from them if you are caught. So, it's probably best to avoid that if possible. Now, one thing that might help you avoid the enemies, as you may have saw in Treehouse, is the new Phantom Cloak that you'll acquire at some point. Which basically makes Samus invisible to the enemies, at least uh, to sight. I believe if they touch you, you're still left vulnerable to them. Um, now the downside to the cloak, well two of them, is one, you move really slow with it on, and two is the fact that it's constantly depleting your health, meaning it can leave you extremely vulnerable if you use it too often, so you gotta be careful to uh, balance your usage of it. So I love that, how they're adding like stealth mechanics to Metroid, you know, far more than it existed before, and that's really exciting to me, I think it's gonna really ratchet up the tension as uh, Mr. Sakamoto touched on himself. Now, of course, you're not going to be encountering these enemies constantly because they exist in these rooms that are separated by pixelated doors. That's how you know when you're in an enemy room or not, is if you pass through a pixelated door. And even when you are in a room, um, you can try and avoid making sounds to avoid tipping them off. And I'm really liking the overall balance we're seeing here, where, you know, on the one hand, you have the typical action of a Metroid game. Uh, in addition to puzzles, such as one where we saw where they'd reverse, I think, the lava flow or some kind of liquid flow uh, in order to create an opening later on or something. And then three are these new stealth-based mechanics, which are really going to make you think about traversing the environment in a whole new way, as I kind of said earlier. So, yeah, I can't wait to go hands-on with this myself, because it's just looking like a ton of fun. It's nice to have 2D Metroid finally back especially in HD on the Switch, running at 60 frames per second by the way, and I think this is just a Metro game a lot of people have been waiting for, particularly with the fact that as Sakamoto himself said, they were looking to do something a bit new with it by taking the elements of the SAX and really just ramping them up with the enemy creatures, but doing it within the context of a standard Metroid game, and that's so exciting. This is going to be a really uh, just kind of like action-packed, tension-filled <laughs> Metroid, and I really can't wait. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. So hopefully you enjoyed again these 12 things, and hopefully you learned something new from it. And with that, thank you for watching. Make sure to click the subscribe button and ring that bell for more of Metroid Dread in the near future, hopefully. And with that, we'll catch you later. Bye, everyone!